So the two points that I'm going to lift up in the um, report are, I, I want to paint the picture of who those people are. You know, Tom drew that, that kitchen table, but uh, there are real numbers on top of, of the numbers that, that Tom put up there and again that they're in the report. But um, six million is the number of families in the state of Ohio that rely on health insurance from their employers, which is currently not taxed. That's something that's going to go away. So what does that mean to the average family? It means between $1,100 and $1,900 uh, because those families would have to pay that in taxes if they don't have this exemption from their employer. That's real money, and that's on just one of those things that, that Tom had talked about. Let's go to another one. Let's go to the number of middle-class families in the state that file for the mortgage interest deduction on their federal taxes. 1.3 million. Again, a lot of Ohioans. And what are they going to lose if that goes away? They're going to lose almost $1,000 um, each per year by taking away that, that deduction. Um, 1.6 million is the number of middle class families that deduct their state and local taxes for, from their federal income taxes. If you're not going to be able to do that anymore, those 1.6 million, they're going to see an average of $670 is what they're going to have to pay more in taxes. Um, you, you also, we, we talked a little bit about um, higher education. There are 349,000 middle class Ohio families and students paying for college education by using President Obama's American Opportunity Tax Credit. That is in jeopardy. We're talking about thousands of dollars that are that's currently going to higher education um, that will not be there any longer. And then if you have children, again, as, as Tom said, there are more burdens that are going to be placed on you, all for the so that we can you know, give um, the, the wealthiest their tax cuts. And so just a couple of those numbers for families um, with children. That there are 158,000 um, low-income and middle-class uh, families in the state that claim the child care tax credit. If that's no longer available to people, that's approximately $318 that the family will have to pay in higher taxes just from that one tax credit. Um, so I don't want to go through every one, but they're all in the report, and I think it's really important so you can see that just not a few of the, the firefighters and, and you know, the examples that we gave. These are millions of Ohioans that are going to be bearing the sacrifice because of the, the policies spelled out in um, Romney and Ryan's platform. And secondly, I want to lift up one more um, section of the report because, as you all know, in Ohio, we are fighting it every single day. And that is the truth about the auto loan. And I bring this up because if any of you read the Columbus Dispatch, their editorial page, some of you still read it, some of us can't stomach it, some of, you, some of you still read it. Over the weekend, if you read it, the editorial page, you will have read this paragraph, which is just absolutely unbelievable. But let's, um, let's read it because it's what we're up against. The editorial page of the Dispatch, in an editorial entitled, Overinflated, Obama Campaign Isn't Painting True Picture of the Auto Bailout in Ohio, they say, those who live outside the Midwest might be led to believe that Ohio is a stereotypical Rust Belt state dependent on auto manufacturing, auto manufacturing jobs, hundreds of thousands of which were rescued by the bailout. This isn't an honest portrayal of Ohio's diverse economy and isn't backed up by the data. In June, Kasich pointed out in a CNN interview that just 700 of the 73,000 jobs added in Ohio since he took office were auto manufacturing jobs. So let's unpack this a little bit. I know the governor thinks the world revolves around him, but believe it or not, we are not going to base the success of the auto loan starting when John Kasich took office. I'm not sure why people are giving him the benefit of the doubt there, but the auto loan was actually put in place some years before John Kasich is, was in office. So let's set that aside because that's pretty pathetic, but the dispatch, of course, you know, it doesn't mind saying that. Um, but let's talk about the real, the real numbers. 700 jobs is what they say. If you actually look at the data and we spell it out in the report, it's 13 times that. And because we all know in Ohio that auto jobs, there, there are lots of, of jobs that are directly uh, impacted by the auto industry. We have suppliers, we make parts. And in fact, in our parts sector, we're second in the country in our output. 
it, it is who we are. We are in auto state, and to downplay that is, is really shameful. And I particularly like to use some of the Department of Development's own stats uh, against them to make this point. And so here are a couple of my favorite, but you can actually get on the Department of Development's website and see these stats. According to the Department of Development, of the 29 largest private investments made in 2011, 11 were automobile industry investments, totaling over $1.7 billion. The auto industry is coming back in Ohio, and the numbers prove it. And then also, we oftentimes talk a little bit of, you know, about the um, Lordstown plan or what's happening in Toledo, but auto impacts everyone in the state. You know, it's just not north of 70. There are 80 counties that have auto manufacturing facilities in the state of Ohio. So there is a reason that this is resonating. There is a reason that the Columbus Dispatch and John Casing and others are trying to discredit this argument. It's because Ohioans know that it's working. So those were a couple of the, my favorite parts of the report, and we should have some more conversation about these because, again, this is about getting what you all need to have those conversations with your neighbors, to have the conversations with the members um, of your organization.